So the flashpoint moment, the great moment, happens September 29th, 1929, 80 years ago from today, uh, three weeks before the market crash. Two couples, the Bennetts and the Hoffmans, young, in their 30s, socially, financially on the rise, they sit down for a social game of bridge. And, and as the midnight hour comes, the cards turn against the Bennetts, and the Bennetts turn against each other. And on what becomes, unbelievably, the final bridge hand of Jack Bennett's life, he fails a four spades contract. And his wife lays into him. She said, you're a bum bridge player, Jack. Those were fighting words, remember, in 1929. Jack says, maybe I'm not the only one. And it intensifies until finally Jack stands up, and he's looming over the table. He's looming over Myrtle. Now, Myrtle knows him as a, not only an alpha male, that's fairly obvious, but as a philanderer. She had found a love letter to him from another woman about four years earlier, and there had been tension in the marriage ever since. And of course, what Culbertson knew was, was that it wasn't when, when husband and wife play bridge together as partners, still this way today, it's not only the cards on the table, but the marriage itself. So now, now Jack stands up and he's looming over the table. And he reaches across, grabs Myrtle, his wife, his playing partner, by the wrist, and slaps her in the face several times hard. The Hoffmans are aghast. <laughs> Myrtle breaks down sobbing. Jack says, I'm leaving. Myrtle says, then go, and he begins to pack his bag. Well, bad enough that th this guy has just struck his wife. Now he's about to compound his mistake by ordering her to go get my gun, <laughs> which he carried with him on the road for protection. He was a traveling salesman. But there's a really bad sequence. <laughs> so guess what happens? Four bullets later, our cad husband is no more, dead on the living room floor. This is the Roaring Twenties. All the women in the audience are ready to applause now. <laughs> she, Myrtle hires a Democratic presidential candidate as her attorney. Senator Jim Reed, the most famous man in Kansas City, brilliant orator. His oratory hearkened to some of the greats of the Senate past, Calhoun, Clay, Webster. He represented Henry Ford and oil companies. He walks into this Pendergast machine courthouse, and I could all but feel the jurors bow to him. And as he's waxing on about the sanctity of womanhood, He's carrying on an extramarital affair with the married woman who lives next door, <laughs> which is why I'll never write fiction, because you cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> and by the way, E. Lee Culbertson is on lecture tour, exploiting this, of course, by telling all the housewives in the pack packed auditoriums, if only the Bennetts had been playing the Culbertson bidding system, Jack would still be alive. To me, in all these books, that are the four books that I've written, the joy of nonfiction is in the research. I went to Kansas City, went to the Bennett's apartment, which is still a pretty tony place. I even learned to fire the killing weapon, a 32 Colt automatic handgun, which was hard to find. It hasn't been made in 50 years, and, and um, it was not one of my uh, you know, great moments in life when I'm tromping through Marin County gun shop saying, excuse me, do you have a 32 Colt automatic? But I found one, and I fired it several times. And the, and the trick in, in narrative nonfiction is to bring it to life on the page so that the reader experiences on the page what your characters experienced in real time. Um, I'm excited for you to, to explore this book further. We can learn from the past. And in closing, let me say that as part of my research for this book, I did learn to play bridge. Uh, my wife, Carrie, who is here, does not play bridge, and, and that's probably a pretty good thing. We've come to believe it's, it's perhaps the surest way to marital bliss. Thank you very much.